paraphrase Shakespeare, lend us your ears. We'll pay it back with interest. Everything you want to hear from the voice of Cerritos College, WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob GF, here at Cerritos College, WPMD Radio, where people make a difference. At this time, I'd like my guests to please introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Aide Castro. I'm councilwoman in the city of Linwood. And um, tell me about your role um, that you have. Well, as councilwoman um, for the city of Linwood, one of my main roles is to um, deal with the budget, allocate the funds accordingly to the different departments as needed, and obviously make sure that the city services are provided according to what the residents expect. Um, how long is a term? Each term is four years, and we are able to serve a total of eight years, which is two terms. Okay. Um, is there a difference uh, between uh, like mayor and, and mayor pro temp? What's, what's the difference with those two rules? So the mayor is the chair of the council, and they run the meetings. And the mayor pro tem is like the vice mayor who basically is there for backup in the event that the mayor cannot attend a meeting or an event. Okay. Um, and both of them, they're, how are they like picked? Um, so in the city of Linwood, since we are a general law city, we do not elect our mayor. We rotate on a yearly basis. So every year, um, after the f on the first meeting of December of Tuesdays, um, we reorganize and the council itself nominates both a mayor and a vice mayor and votes accordingly. And so the mayor and mayor pro tem in a general law city is considered an honorary mayor and mayor pro tem because they do not have any additional powers uh, than the council members other than they run the meeting and uh, run the agenda to make sure that the agenda is posted accordingly. Excellent. Now, um, well, I'll knock out real quick the public service announcements and then we'll be right back. Okay. Nothing better demonstrates an artist's ability to perform, to connect with his audience, than his work on stage. At the WPMD Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we bring you Roadwork. A series of great concerts, start to finish, uninterrupted, from the greatest names in rock and roll. All from the WPMD archives. Some haven't aired in years, some have never aired at all. And you have the best seat in the house, right in front of your speakers. Roadwork. Throughout the week, on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, on WPMD on the net, where people make a difference. Parents sure have their hands full, and they can use an extra hand. Now, every state offers free and low health insurance for your sports hero or budding artist. Kids up to age 19 can get checkups, doctor and dental visits, hospital care, prescriptions, and more. Your child may qualify based on your family size and income. It's one less thing to worry about. Call or go online for more information. Call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. 543-7669. Visit healthcare.gov to learn more about affordable health coverage for your family. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today, my new dad threw a barbecue. Today, my new son and I threw a barbecue. There were burgers and chicken. I burnt everything. The burgers, the chicken, the salad. Ah, they were delicious. They were awful. And then, and then we had watermelon. <laughs> I'm allergic to watermelon. And then we played catch. I broke Mr. Lewis's window. Mrs. Wakeham's window. Mrs. Wakeham's windshield. And then, somehow, my hand. My hand! <laughs> and then my dad even let me drive his car. The hospital's on the right! It was a rough day. It was a great day. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. 
A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob J.F., here at WPMD Studios, located in Norwalk, California. And I'm back with my guests. Um, I was wondering, aside from City Council, there are also other things that, um, well, speaking of City Council, I know that, uh, like on the agenda, there's this thing called uh, Successor Agency. Can you ex uh, explain what, what that is? Um, yes. Um, as a city council member, we serve on different um, type, what you call boards. So, for example, what before used to be called the Redevelopment Agency is now called the Successor Agency because it's been dissolved by the state governor. So, um, we'll start the regular council agenda and then transition into the Successor Agency, sometimes the Finance Authority and or Housing Authorities, depending on what is required for that day's agenda. Okay. Now, um, aside from city council, there's also um, commissions. Can you explain what are commissions and how they work? Yes, commissions are basically advisory committees to the city council. So certain um, members of the community will be appointed to serve, whether it's on the planning commission, the community block grants commission, or traffic and safety. And they're just basically regular residents that review some of the information and make recommendations to the city council. Okay. Um, and their terms or uh, the commissions do they mm -hmm. serve terms their their terms are the same as uh, the council member who appointed them okay. um, so being that um, you know you, you've reached the point in which you're, you're already you know representing the city in, in city council uh, tell me your story tell me tell me from the beginning you know how, how was school like um, were you active in leadership? Did you like right away know you wanted to get into that? What kind of jobs like led up to that? Um, that's a difficult question because I, I always knew I liked politics, but my jobs in the past never truly were anything that transitioned into politics. Uh, politics does not require any specific type of background. All it really requires is a passion and a want to better your community. Um, I have a real estate background and through my real estate background, I did a lot of networking and met a lot of people, but I started my career in politics helping um, others run for, um, for certain positions. And in one of those, I helped out one of my cousins and he won and he appointed me to my first commission. And then from there, I just kind of went on. So um, did you have any other jobs before that? Or? Um, before uh, working in the real estate industry, I did customer service and retail. So again, it doesn't really require anything specifically. It's more of a passion that you might have to better your community. Excellent. Um, what kind of volunteer like uh, stuff like for what's a good starter for people like if they just want to get their their foot in the door to like. The first thing I would recommend is people to attend their local council meetings, get to know the local elected officials. Um, but again, you could do that through many different avenues, whether it's uh, volunteering with nonprofit organizations, your local youth groups. Um, so it, it doesn't really, requ there's no real formula to it. But obviously, if you want to one day become an elected yourself, the best route is probably to volunteer in someone's campaign so that you can see what it is that they go through to get elected. Now, for um, when does the election usually come around for the new, like, when, when do, like, the the council positions like open up each time that they have to keep running? Well, it depends in the type of city that you're in, whether you're a charter city or a general law city. In the city of Linwood, we have elections every two years in no the first Tuesday of November. And uh, in one term, it's two seats open. And in the, sec in the next one, it's three uh, seats open. And they alternate from there. OK. And um, is there is there one coming up yet or yes this November there's an election where two seats at large are open and um, the election is just like one day or it's just uh, 
Well, yeah, you can only vote that one day, but most people start campaigning months in advance. Okay. Um, so um, this year, the, um, you know, uh, here at Cerritos College, you know, students have a chance to run for student body president uh, once a year. It's, it's in the spring because it's towards the end already now with the academic uh, year. Um, so for these individuals who these students are trying to run, what, what is the key to like a good campaign? What, what's there, what should you not do and what, what's good to do for like a campaign? Um, it depends on what the issues are. If you're going to run for any type of leader pos leadership position, you should understand what the issues are. So obviously communicating with your peers um, and understanding their needs and wants are going to make it easier for you to campaign. Um, but you must have a platform. You must be able to say what where you stand on the issue. Um, so a lot of it requires networking, communicating, socializing, and again, just being aware of what the issues are, what's important, finding an issue that is important to you that you show passion on. And, you know, most people make the mistake of just pointing out mistakes but offer no solutions. So if you want to run a positive campaign, once you identify an issue, make sure that you can also identify a solution. Um, when is the, the next um, council meeting? The next council meeting in the city of Linwood is April 7th at 6 p.m. And we host our council meetings every first and third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, oh, and also, you guys um, have like a great um, system where you can access like the, the public records and stuff like um, through the website. Um, I think it was. It's um, my doc spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so anybody who wants to, who doesn't have time to attend the city council meetings is more than welcome to go on www.linwood.ca.us. Our agendas are posted 72 hours in advance, and you're able to see the issues as well as the staff recommendations behind them. Excellent. Um, when, when does a, a agenda have to go up for the next uh, meeting? Per the Brown Act regulations, they must be up 72 hours in advance for the public's view. Excellent. Well, I'm actually going to knock out the next public service announcement so that we can continue this uh, interview. Okay. Okay, we'll be right back. People don't much listen to the radio on the radio anymore. They listen on their desktops, they listen on their laptops, they listen on their tablets, and mostly, they listen on their cell phones. You can hear WPMD on great streaming sites like TuneIn and Streama and Radio Shaker, and now you can listen to the place where people make a difference on a new WPMD app. It's free and ready for you to download. Just go to appcatch.com, that's A-P-P-C-A-T-C-H dot com, search for WPMD, then hit launch, and you're with us. It'll work on your iPhone, your Android, your BlackBerry, your iPad. You can take WPMD with you wherever you go, whenever you go. The WPMD app. One more reason why WPMD on the net is the place where people make a difference. America's public school teachers equip our youngsters with many skills. They teach students to read and do math. They teach children history and science. They help them learn how to solve problems, resolve conflicts, and cooperate with each other. Teachers care about how and what their students learn. Teachers want all of them to succeed. Just like you, their parents and community members, please come into our classrooms and see how we are fulfilling America's promise by making great public schools for every child. A message from the National Education Association and WPMD on the net. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in, say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings and another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, 
which, if you're buzzed, could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Falcon Spotlight. I'm your host, Rob GF, here at WPMD Studios, located in Norwalk, California. And I'm back here with my guests. Um, so, uh, tell me about, like, the events, uh, you know, in Linwood. What, what do we have um, throughout the year? We have a variety of different events. We normally honor the national holidays, such as, obviously, Christmas, um, Easter, the 4th of July, um, periodically, we do different community cleanup events, uh, one that will be done this March 28th at 9 a.m. at Linwood City Park. It, it will be a community cleanup in honor of Cesar Chavez. And then on March 31st, also at um, 9 a.m. at um, Linwood uh, Park, there will be a ceremony honoring Cesar Chavez. Um, but it just depends on what's going on throughout the year, what the uh, residents are asking for. A lot of our events are held at Plaza Mexico. They tend to be a little bit more cultural. And um, in the senior center, again, different types of events that, that are done to uh, socialize and celebrate within the senior center. Cool. Um, uh, tell me about the, the Christmas parade. The Christmas Parade is an annual celebration. Uh, the idea is to um, get families to come out on a, on a Friday night. It's normally done the first Friday of December. Um, we call it the Candy Cane Lane Parade. It starts on Martin Luther King and Atlantic and ends on Bullis and Martin Luther King. It's about a one mile a parade route and every year we have different grand marshals and the families love to come out set up their lawn chairs along the the route enjoy the the floats or whatever par, uh, parade participants are and they have a good time cool. um so um i know that sometimes uh you know to a, another good thing um of getting involved with the community sometimes as like organizations um can you tell me about like the stuff you're, you're um you participate in um there's different types of organizations but um it just really again depends on what your passion is so there's no particular organization that you need to be a part of to get involved uh, me personally, I was very much involved with Linwood Athletics Community Services, which was a pop corner program that did football and cheer for kids from the age of 5 through 14. They offered um, after school tutoring, and after the age of 14, they transitioned into the high school programs. So it was a little different, but it was fun, and I enjoyed doing it with my children. Okay. Um, What's. Well, um I know that sometimes here for, for school, like sometimes students can can stress out when they're balancing sometimes work and school or, or they have like responsibilities that they have to like take care of. What's, what's a good um, thing for like time management and stuff? Um, well, when you have a lot on your plate and you want to manage your time accordingly, the best thing to do is um, make sure you keep a good calendar Make sure you give yourself time in between your appointments or your responsibilities so that you're not rushing. Um, if whenever you have the opportunity to advance on something, advance on it. Do not procrastinate. Don't leave it till the last minute. And if you feel yourself being overwhelmed, then chances are you're doing too much and that's a problem and you need to delete some of the activities. Uh, sometimes we confuse um, some of our leisure activities with responsibilities and that's when you need to al analyze your own personal situation and and remove yourself um, so that you don't overstress um, and that you're able to focus accordingly on your priorities which 
in this case, if you're working, it should be, and, and you're going to school, it should be those two things and everything else should kind of fall behind. Okay. Um, so aside from, from like uh, city council meetings, like um, do you guys have to like attend any other meetings or? Um, the only responsibilities that we have as electeds are to attend the council meetings. Um, attending community events are optional, um, and uh, you should attend them whenever possible, but um, the only real responsibility you have is to attend the council meetings. <coughs> uh. Oh, well, so typically, like, when, when you do, you know, have free time, like, what do you enjoy doing on, on your free time? I know that some people, like, they don't, like, that they don't, uh, like, it, it's great to, you know, like, get to know, like, your, your, your community leaders and so forth. Like, you know, you imagine they're, like, super busy, but what do you enjoy doing, like, on your free time? Well, in my case, I'm a part-time elected official, so I do have a full-time job. So when I'm not working or dealing with city uh, politics, I pretty much dedicate um, my time with my family. I have four children, so most of my free time I try to just spend quality time with them. Uh, my idea of a good time is just staying at home and vegetating. I do not want to socialize. I don't want to talk to people. I just want to relax in the comfort of my home with my family because with work and politics, that's all I do. So um, that's the last thing I want to do on my time off. <laughs> no, I know um, one of the things here at school, I, I guess most of us, we, we all deal with it. Um, mathematics is probably like the hardest part of education. Um, did you have like, like a subject that you didn't like? Like how do you, um, you know, get through it? Um, I didn't necessarily have a subject that I did not like. I had subjects that I had a hard time with, um, and that was st um, statistics. I passed it, um, luckily, but um, it wasn't with the best grade. All it mattered was that I passed it. <laughs> um, what was your favorite? Um, my favorite was probably English. It um, really helped develop my writing skills. Oh, that's a good one. Um, What's a good way for someone to to be more outspoken? Um, for people when they're shy and stuff, uh, what are good things that people can try so that they can, you know, get used to it? Because sometimes people have to be get used to public speaking. Find a topic that you're passionate about. Um, when you like what you're talking about, it's easy. And um, I find that most people are, it's not that, that they're shy. They might just be intimidated. So if you have to do any type of public speaking, make sure you find a way to include your passion in it. And don't, don't think about it as if you're speaking in public. Think about it as if you're having a conversation with someone and you're just basically explaining to that person um, what you like about your passion or what moves you or what gears you towards it and just be as detailed as possible because at the end of the day whomever you're speaking to doesn't have the same understanding of the topic as you do so be very detailed um, a lot of people make the mistake of being very limited with the information that they provide when they're speaking um, and um, they don't engage so um, as an individual you should know what you want to hear when someone's speaking to you so try to do the same, you know, not, not to be too long-winded, um, get straight into the point, but make sure that you include as many details. Excellent. Um, how about, um, I, know, I know we had briefly talked about like uh, a good campaign. How about like when, when someone's like uh, applying for a job? I know that sometimes, you know, coming straight out of high school and stuff, like some people don't get discouraged from like rejections when they try to apply to like jobs what's a good way to try to take on a, a job that you want to go for um, if you're applying for a specific position um, at a company 
uh, make sure you research the company. Make sure you research their pros and their cons. Um, try as much as possible to talk to some of the current employees um, so that as you're preparing for the interview, um, you have an understanding of what the company offers. And, you know, one of the main questions asked during an interview is, uh, what do you think you can um, bring positively to this organization? So because you're familiar with the organization, it'll be easier for you to answer. Um, so that's, that's, that's an easy tip to follow. Um, so um, do you think uh, students, like, I know that some people, like, they don't take the time to, to watch the news and stuff to keep up with current events. Um, you know, is, is there, like, a, like an importance that people should, like, you know, I know that sometimes um, we, like, you know, teens and, and people still barely coming out of high school, like, they just care about, like, watching TV and stuff. But um, what are the benefits of, like, seeking higher education and just being aware of, of things? Well, it, it depends on the individual. I mean, you can tell someone to try to be aware of their current affairs as much as possible. But if they don't have an interest in it, it's just going to go in one ear and go out the other. But I think, thankfully, thanks to social media, a lot of that is changing because as people are, um, you know, scrolling through their Facebook or whatever social media account they might have, a lot of that is, is, is now readily available and, and the way it's pitched, it, it makes it a little bit more interesting. So I, I think that's, that's a little different nowadays with technology. In reference to higher education, obviously the more aware you are of what's going on, going on in your surroundings and current affairs, um, the more um, problem solving skills you might develop and critical thinking skills that should be able to transition into good, you know, a good job. So hopefully that should be more than enough of a motivator to want to seek higher education, whether it's through a normal uh, educating institute or whether it's self-taught through reading or, um, you know, self-improvement workshops. Um, so I, I noticed also, you know, the, like our city website, it's, it has like a, like a nice tutorial that people can check out, like, um, like it briefly mentions each like department kind of the the videos. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything? <coughs> um, um, what, what what's something that uh, people should check out um, that they don't if they don't know Linwood? Um, I mean, obviously, just visit the website, and if they want to know what are the main issues, is is just review the agenda. If you cannot attend, um, all the information's on there, and um, every agenda has the, the minutes of the prior meeting, so it'll let you know what the outcome was, what were the concerns, and what the main issues are, um, as well as how the council voted in the prior meeting. So if anything, visit that and the uh, calendar of events so that you're aware of what um, events are available throughout the year. Um. So there's there's a parade uh, in the year and anything else that's um the Fourth of July celebration. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're still one of the cities that still celebrates Fourth of July at night. We have a fireworks show and throughout the day people start setting up their tents or their barbecues and they spend the day with their family and at night once the sun goes down the fireworks starts. And the Cesar Chavez event. Um, it's um it's been around uh this is freshly new right um, yeah this is a fairly new event um again as different as as the community is changing um the request of the types of events that are celebrated are changing and this year a group of community residents decided that they wanted to honor caesar chavez so um, as a municipality, we don't really stress anything specific other than the Christmas parade and the 4th of July, as well as our veterans event, but any other um, additional events are normally put together by community organizations based on their needs and desires. Now, for people who haven't been to like a official meeting and stuff like that, like I know that you had mentioned uh, the Brown Act and stuff, um, 
you know, can you explain, like, you know, like, I think, like, here for student government, we have also, I think, the parliamentary procedures? So, um, the Brown Act is basically uh, an act that was enacted to ensure that there's transparency and that it gives members of the public plenty of time to know what their city council is meeting about. So that it just means that we have to post the agenda 72 hours in advance and that everything has to be done in a transparent public way. Um, as for how we run the meetings, we use a combination of parliamentary uh, procedure as well as Robert's Rules of Order, and we establish rules of decorum. Um, but the style can be changed uh, accordingly depending on who is chairing the meeting. So since mayors do change yearly, um, the style might change, but the normal procedures as parliamentary as well as Robert Rules of Order are normally followed. Uh, can you explain what's quorum? A quorum means that you must have enough individuals um, on the dais to vote. So, for example, in the city of Linwood, since we have five members, we require at least three members present to be able to um, have quorum and move forward with the meeting. So, in other words, you must have um, an addition. So, if there's, there's five, three is the majority and three is considered the majority, but you need at least three for a quorum. In case the vote splits, the, there's a deciding vote at all times. Okay. Um, and the meetings, uh, they always start at six, correct? They start at six o'clock. Sometimes we're a little late, but only a few minutes late. But yes, they start at six. Um, oh, and also one of the unique things too is like people can also access like audio, like um, that's also all on. Yes, the meetings are recorded and um, you can always go to the city clerk's office and request a copy of the audio. Um, so, uh, also, you know, in, in Linwood, like we have, um, well, I, I guess every high school, you know, they have uh, like a requirement for graduation. It's a uh, community service uh, I, I know we had the uh, the recreation department here as well <coughs> uh, we have a variety of uh, unique programs that uh, people can can join uh, in Linwood um, is um, is there any volunteering stuff like in the city also like let's take for example the um, 4th of July or anything like that Yes, members of the community are able to volunteer. However, they must be at least 16 years of age and must go through the Human Resource Department and pass a background check um, to be able to volunteer accordingly. Um, there is uh, several community cleanups uh, throughout the year, and for that, you just need to show up. So, now, the, the year goes by so quickly. I can't believe, like, spring break just went right away, and, like, time flies by so fast. It just feels like it's going by quickly. Mm, yes. <laughs> um, so, after, um, like, the city council, like, do you guys uh, get to, like, interact also with, like, other uh um, officials and stuff like that like yes um, we tend to interact with other elected officials whether it's higher elected or um, just members of other city councils um, whether it's at a conference or just different events so yeah we we tend to socialize a lot with each other and try to exchange ideas cool um so when oh yeah um so tell me about the the kid mayor uh, the Kid Mayor is a program that was established by our new mayor, Mayor Solache. Um, and every, we have 12 elementary schools in the city of Linwood. So every month uh, we are choosing a new mayor, um, Kid Mayor from each elementary school that will represent us for that one month. And they um, run the first five minutes of the meeting, they open it up, and they accompany the mayor to all the events that are going on in the city that month. No, I, I think the the cool thing also is you know like each of you get to present like an item to the the kid mayor as they are appointed. Can you tell me about those things? Um, yes, the uh, kid mayor is presented with a city pin, a city plaque, 
um, a name badge, a scholarship, and a proclamation. So every year, I mean every month, we, we present them with these items on the dais. So the pen, can you explain the pen? The city pen is basically the city logo, and it can come either in color, gold, or uh, silver. And it's just basically the logo of the city so that when they're in public, it's some type of recognition. Now we are, let me double check. Yeah, we're down to our last like minute or two. Um, I, I want to thank you for your time. I was wondering if you have any closing statement, any, any um, tips for people that want to, you know, be a leader in the future or anything like that. Um, thank you for inviting me. As for tips, um, all I could say is that there's a saying that if you want something done right, do it yourself. Um, and one of the reasons sometimes as a nation we suffer is because we are too apathetic and we do not get involved. So if you want to see change in your community, get up and be the change. Thank you so much for your time. And this concludes the Falcon Spotlight. Tune in every Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on WPMD, where people make a difference.